Hello there. We'll just get rid of that ticker. Uh, this is Gavin Taylor. Um, you'll have noticed um, the previous sign said Gavin Taylor Music Tuition, and this is a Dobro channel. This is kind of my second channel. I've yet to make a, a pre loop um, for Dobro. Um, so I'll be posting various videos um, uh, and live streams and hoping to engage with people about um, the Dobro. I'm a teacher, so um, if there's any of you out there interested in lessons, do get in touch. You can either message me on here on the on the Facebook page, or underneath there you can see um, there's an email address. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll be doing more here or on YouTube. I'll have to to, to wait and see as to what's gonna what uh, what's most rewarding, I suppose, for me. What works best for the channel. Um, so today I thought I'd do a little. Um, video uh, or stream rather about right hand technique uh, and how I use it. Now I'm going to pre pre kind of define all of this by saying I came to Dobro about um, 2000 and, oh, 2003, 2002 something in that region started started playing that way so I've been playing it a while but I've been a musician for since started playing at 14 and I'm all of 48 now so uh, a fair while. Um, so there was a, had a lot of musical experience, primarily on guitars before there. So when I adapted, and I think this is a common story, when people adapt from guitar to pedal steels and lap steels, there's techniques that might um, you might take with you or you might shed, and everyone's got a different uh, kind of story about that. In my case, in this right hand technique, and we'll close in on this in a second, um, I use three finger picks. Now. Usually in um, you know banjo, dobro, there's just the two. People use the two. And uh, for pedal steels and lap steels, there are muting techniques that use this third finger knuckle, uh, like that, um, that make it very, you know, a, a far stronger reasoning for not using three. For me, I end up always wanting to use that third finger as I'm playing, so I use three um, finger picks there. So I'll just take that titling off and um, we'll go let's have a slightly closer look at the right hand and the picks that I use and my uh, my words of wisdom on that that topic. Um, so if I cut to the, um, the dobro, um, let's see, get rid of those and we're wanting the other camera. Number one, four. Okay. Cut to that. Here. <clears throat> so now I'll just zoom that out. No, that's fine. Okay, so I've got this thumb pick here. Um, now you get a variety of thumb picks. I don't have a list of hand, but I was going to show you the ones that I do use, which are these Golden Gate ones. Okay, and they're the only ones that I use. I have to sort of find them where I can, usually import them from America. I'm presuming they're from San Francisco, as that's where it's from. And what's specific about them is you can see this hook around the thumb, this rather enlarged section here. I use the very heavy gauge ones, and they do wear out. And they're reasonably expensive for thumb picks. So you can re... Um, I've got a little sand board with some, uh, you know, a bit of board with some sandpaper on it, and you can reprofile them and use them to get a bit more life out of them, um, rather than them being straight edges on the top here, rather than that being straight as you profile it, it ends up being a more of an angle. So essentially this bit in here, I'm not sure if you can see, you, yeah, I just saw the contour there, let's see if I can get it in the right light. Somewhere over here, maybe. Mm, I'm struggling to find it. The this edge gets very worn. The leading edge that goes over the string there. And I must come at it like that because it, it indents here and there's there's a big groove in there. So we go through them quite fast. Um, you know, if I've done a session on on a fresh pick, um, well, I pick, say a pick would probably last four gigs or something before I'm really annoyed at it, before I'm really aware of um, it being, um, the indent being an issue. But yeah, these, these are the, the, the picks that I, I think are really, 
really good. Some of the characteristics about them that are important for me, why I gravitated to these, is a lot of the thinner picks, as I'm coming across the string, if I'm doing that kind of pressure, quite a lot of energy through there, it will just twist in my thumb. It will just, I'll end up like that with it back to front on a normal pick. Whereas these, I've never had a loss of control of them. It's always been there. So that's as a due to my technique of, of that I'm quite, quite, um, uh, you know, quite a lot of attenuation of, of pressure that, that I want to put on my thumb. So I, I really want to be able to get a lot of dynamic range out of that and feel secure that this just isn't going to pop away anywhere. With my fingers, I originally tried off some, some other types of finger picks. You, get, you do get a few different variations on these designs. Um, ones that are hollow in here and just have a metal, metal edge. I tried a few of those um, and I didn't really have anything against them, but they were, these were far easier to get. You also get these in different um, gauges. So you can see in there there's some writing. Uh, it says this is a 0 0.025 gauge and that makes it quite bendy. Uh, this one, I think they're all two, two fives. They're all point zero two fives. So you get heavier and lighter gauges of metal. Uh, not that I found that hugely distinct, but it does. You end up reshaping these around your hands quite a lot. Um, and after, if you know, if they get stood on or something like that, that you have to repro them. So you can see some relatively heavy kinks in them. So you know, I end up refidgeting with these and reprofiling these quite a lot. Some of the characteristics that I'm, I'm aware of, um, and I haven't really read about these, but that have been important, is um, <clears throat> you really want that, the end of that, that metal ridge to just cover, for me anyway, the way I try and profile them is for them to just cover round the camber and almost touch my nail. But they, can't, they really camber round the finger and nearly touch the nail. Now, depending on how long my nails are, um, that's that's going to kind of look slightly different. Like for my first finger is is definitely looking there, but I think I probably want to bend that one in a bit more. So there's a, there's a relatively uh, even consistency of of the fingers coming over there. If the, if there's too straight, one ones really pop out. And also, just as the hands moving, there's a, a there's a great you know there's a tolerance there as you because your finger does move back and forth. It's just it only wants to catch it as it's coming this way. Now. <clears throat> If it's like, if it's too, if it's not bent in enough, what sometimes I find is I'll put my finger on the string and I'll catch it like that, where it's actually, you know, it hooks underneath. And in the the heat of playing, if you like, I've had picks fly off because of an, an a, you know, you've just caught it unnaturally. So it's quite important to get these things feeling really, really ergonomic and comfortable around around there. Now, again, everybody's going to attenuate to a kind of different technique of how. Um, how important that is but that's a little bit about about this this hand about how I set it up so in terms of the the you know the stuff that I put on so these gold gate golden gate picks these these heavy ones it's got the serial number of particular ones that I use there um, uh, I can't live without these um, and every, they're relatively expensive so I have to bu uh, buy a box every uh, depending how much work I'm doing every so often um, yeah, so uh, on to a little bit about um, placing the hand there. I'm just going to zoom that camera out and we'll just look at a little bit of a technique there. Most um, Dobros have got this this, coat, this this sort of outer cone protector thing on the top here. I'll just get that pick slightly out of the way. And it's a, you know, a great place to re rest your hand there. Um, now, depending on what, what, again, what sort of technique you've come from, that's the, the, the general Dobro technique. I'm left-handed. So my right hand is is generally the weakest hand. Um, it, it, everything to do with moving this hand is is slightly less um, dynamic relative to relative to my left hand. Just as so happens, uh, I ended up playing um, right-handed um, on most instruments. So um, when I came from playing guitar, I was so used to letting my hand look like like this in a nice curve around the wrist so that when you're doing things with the ligaments there's no tension here. Now, there's so much like on electric guitar, um, you're wanting to do a lot of dampening techniques with um, with this. So even though it's finger picking stuff, um, a bit like a lot of acoustic guitar, you still end up having to do here. And now the, the heel of the hand here, really this bony part, I just sort of rest right above somewhere in the, between the, the bottom two strings to make it very easy to roll my hand over and touch the strings. Now, I wouldn't necessarily play like
quite like that, but... So that I can really let that, that hand come across the whole, the whole bridge. That's probably a, quite a, an acute version of, of the idea of muting on the, on the top string like that. Um, but either way, that, 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 the palm sitting there and letting the, 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 the fingers sit there. Now, as I say, most people wouldn't necessarily use this, this finger here. They just have the two. So much like uh, you would find on a normal guitar, the thumb uh, for a lot of uh, you know basic patterns, you're thinking the thumb might just work on these bottom bass strings, maybe come across, and the, the fingers are working on the top ones. I end up doing patterns like this. That, maybe that's a triplet, one and two and a three and a four and a one, thumb index middle, or alternate like that. And that's it with the ring finger as well. That's a little irregular. So that's working on one string. So there's a variety of different ways the thumb might work with the, the finger. A really important one that I find is actually a combination of, um, if I just cut to another shot so that we're gonna see both, um, both hands in action, if we like. And I'll just preview, get this shot compiled before I move on. Um, Yeah, we'll get to that one. And just for a reminder for anyone that needs it, this is. Oops, she's in and she's out. Right hand technique. So, really, the the right hand box, the little box is is we're focusing on today. But for <clears throat> sake of music, um, oh, that camera's just drifted out. I'm just gonna sort that camera out. Um, there's a technique here that what I'm going to introduce, which is about dead sounds. You get this a lot, maybe on bass playing, and it's not it's not really shown quite a lot. Where how, how the use of dead tones in melodic playing or in phrasing, uh, and I find it critical to um, getting good phrasing on um, on things is to be able to uh, be able to play things. So I'm just gonna, I think this, there might be a loop here still from the other day. Yeah, so I've just got this really simple G loop here going on. Okay, and I'm gonna play play around, uh, I'll try and keep into a pair that you can see. And what I'm gonna be doing is this, letting my thumb sit on a lower string than I'm playing. So my index finger is gonna pluck this G string and my thumb is gonna pluck the dead string below it. Okay, so we're not really talking about left hand technique, so don't worry too much about that. But notice in the small box there, or maybe I should swap these boxes around, that would probably make more sense. Let's put that big camera there, that one there. Oh, no, that's not what I meant to do. That. And that. Okay, so you'll notice here that my my thumb is going to be playing a dead note on a lower string. Now the muting for that is par primarily here, but it's also on the other hand. I've got a finger here. The slide is um, on a higher string, but my fingers are all sitting behind there as well. Like if I did that, this hand isn't touching the string. Still play a note, so that's the fr that's the slide hand here doing a muting. So it's a kind of conjunction of both. I'm making sure there's a dead note behind the note I'm playing, so I can do patterns like this. So before the note, we've got a dead sound. Down, it's peaking a little bit with the uh, the dough there. So, 
So this is maybe an underrated or underdescribed technique, maybe, um, that I've, uh, I find myself doing a lot. And when I'm talking with uh, students, I'm aware that um, it doesn't really come up that particular type of, uh, of, of muted technique coming up. We might get something where we're playing the same note and playing a dead note, then a muted one. Dead, the dead sound precedes a fretted one, as opposed to playing a dead note on a previous string. Essentially, you can play them both at the same time there. It does lead to a lot more um, precedence, a requirement for walking like you might do on a classical guitar with I's and M's on fingers. Because the thumb might otherwise be um, you know, doing things on lower strings. But it ends up giving uh, a, a wider frame of sort of uh, phrasing options uh, when you add in these uh, percussive dead strokes to things. So there's a little um, uh, element to this technique that that's uh, definitely that I definitely use a lot. Obviously, there's lots of rules and other right hand te techniques here, which are very much like. Um, anything you're going to find in classical guitar repertoire as well about um, yeah uh, anything that's going to do that type of uh, thumb index middle and ring fingers or just the three of them in combinations most styles of music are going to have something that does that even in you know fiddle music you're going to get ostinatos that do that except this right hand isn't going to be doing that, doing that element it's just on this instrument um, that becomes, or in banjos we get this term rules, um, that has you know context on the left hand, but the right hand is perceived as being the more, um, you know, what you're having to learn is thumb, then the middle, then the thumb, then the index, something like that. Now, part of those where it, it tends to lead directly back to the, the right hand, uh, sorry, the, the left hand, is that you're generally with rules using um, a fretted pitch, like here I am on the D string at the fifth fret, fretting a G, and I've got a G in front of me, so I might get a roll like that, which is just the G's. Now, I'm not really using my third finger for that, I'm far more traditional style of, of, of roll. Thumb, then I'm alternating between my thumb and index and middle finger. And the index and middle are on the open G string. So I'll try and just do that at tempo. Four now. And sixteenths. And there's me doing it down to a D. Thumbs move down to the B string, and my index and middle fingers are on that. And maybe up to a B. So you'll find um, another video on my YouTube channel that um, goes over some of these positions. Uh, I'm not so much interested in going over the positions, but I'll look maybe slightly at some of the right hand techniques on this. Okay, and not all of that, my hand here was sitting a little further back. I wasn't really, for those rolls, there was no muting technique going on. It's just sitting a little further back on that. Um, yeah, so there's um, those techniques. There's also all just the synchronous chucks. Now, it's mostly those that I really find. Well, I'm just striking myself there. Some of the other re reasonings that I, use, that I really like this. So there I'm doing the same kind of thing. I'm alternating G's here. But I'm letting my ring finger do this high D string. Now you can do that with that, there's no problem. But I find it far um, more um, organic in my hand to do what I might have done on the guitar and just use that thing. And you've got the ability to, you know, to keep the fingers allocated to each string. So there's
there's some. Uh, is there any other elements that we might have? Obviously, broken chords like that. We've just got one more finger that allows you to to roll through. Um, the thumb can take the place of that as well. There's no really. It's very rare that there's only one technique of how to accomplish a given task. It's just it allows me to do that to have three fingers there. Uh, as I say, it really just comes from um, playing, you know, my, my years on the on the on the guitar and feeling like I didn't really want to relinquish the same abilities when moving on to this instrument. Any other uh, elements of technique with this hand? Um, I suppose this 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 some of the problems that I, I encountered moving moving on to this is is tempo and if you're really having to work in, in an environment where you're having to do rolls for a long time at high tempos, which this isn't. You know that I could probably keep that up for for hours at that type of tempo. But you know that's not a driving tempo at all. What I find is that the ligaments can really seize up here, so it takes quite a while of building up, and it's quite easy to, to um, especially when you're holding the dough. If I zoom out, um, you know, like most things, when it comes to the right hand, the position is is um, the thing that's going to make um, stressful positions happen. So I've just swapped to how I might hold the dobro if I was uh, playing it, like standing up for other, with the strap. And discuss how that. Was. The hand goes underneath here, underneath the strap. If I just move to the edge of the chair, so it's more like how I'd normally play it. The instrument sits at, a, at an angle. The more straight up it is, the more I, I find uh, this forearm gets stressed. The more I can keep this this angle less acute. So. Essentially, the idea is when your when your ligatures are like this, these fingers are moving with the least amount of friction through them. When they're like that, there's a brace under here in which all your uh, ligaments have to come through. So they're being held down. There's a point of friction that's happening there when your hands like that and you're moving. Okay, which is essentially the sort of position that you're having to have there. Your wrist is lower than your knuckles, so they're coming up and round and that can really stress the position so I, I tend to try and when I'm playing try and uh, keep the, the dobro quite at an angle down the way and try as best as I can to minimize um, the angle that's happening there um, to improve the uh, the pace of which this, this this hand can work so there's another little right hand technique that I found, but yeah, so there's a balance between, you know, you're holding the instrument, it's kind of braced between here, although it's not, not really, I'm extens accentuating there, and your palm on the on the bridge there, and that, that's really controlling the, the nature of the instrument. This hand wants to be as free as it can be um, in terms of playing. So I'll just do a little noodle on the outro. <laughs> you find that um, interesting to some degree um, a little delve into the uh, nuances of right hand technique on the uh, on the dobro um, as I say should you find yourself uh, interested in any more um, dobro related information uh, do drop me a line if you're interested in any lessons drop me a line I'm sure we can accommodate something um, online on your chosen platform um, yeah, so the email address is on the on the on the page there. That's uh, GT Dobro Lessons Online at gmail.com, or you can drop me a line on the the, uh, the Facebook group. Um, I don't think we've had any messages uh, come in. Given the channel's just started, I have not got really uh, uh, a following to speak of as yet. But I hope that will change in uh, months to come.
Anyway, I shall leave it there and I shall cut back to my uh, GT Music uh, outro. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.